Welcome, members from around Nigeria and around the globe. Thank you for joining us for the 14th episode of CITN Taxation on You. I um, want to thank you um, for you know keeping them forth, staying with us all through. Um, today, we have another special guest, as you can see um, from the screen, and then forever you are logged in around the world. Um, we've gone um, from the, we've gone far and wide to bring in the, the, the best minds in Nigeria for the subject matter we have today. And our title for today's program is um, Petroleum Industry Act 2021. What has changed? You know, we all know about the act and what has changed in the touching of oil and gas. And then you agree with me that there is no other person, there is no better person in all humility to discuss this topic other than our elder here, Alaji, mm -hmm. as is Alaji, SCTI. Alaji, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Alaji, like, honestly, you know, if we, we'll be trying to you know, get you on board. Bad, bad, um, bad. We tried to get you on board then, but we're happy you are here live. Oh, all right. Thank you very much. Not through Zoom. You are in the studio here at CITS and the yeah. Thank you. Here in um yeah, yeah. and Lagos, Nigeria. Um so Alaji, um just a quick um are not the technical, technical people. So the collection no, like of young, students, huh? of taxpayers. <laughs> Of That's just right. um, passive followers, of right. the wishers, of our members as well. So That's we are right. going to tone down the discussion to That's ensure right. we can engage and um, get them along with us. That's you know, right. as we move on, Alaji. That's so right. thank you for being here. So Alaji, let's start thank with um, before the Petroleum um, Industry Act of 2021. Okay. Right. Of course, we have the Petroleum Profit Act. That's right. Over the years, mm -hmm. um, I want to what informed the decision or the plan. Um, what's your opinion as to why government decided, you know, to come up with this new framework under the petroleum? Because let's even know what necessitated okay. this and before we move on with it. Okay, uh, thanks very much, uh, OGS, and uh, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. um, and um, thanks to all our viewers. Um, the key thing is that you know, Nigeria is one of the oil and gas countries, you know, worldwide. And the government has been thinking about reforming that industry such that we will join countries that embark on best practices in terms of generating adequate revenue from the oil industry, as well as managing the resources in the best manner. We have countries like uh, Norway, for example, they generate oil just as we generate, but they invest about 73% of their revenue. And one of the interactions we have with them, and they told us, yeah, they are investing for the future of their country and their unborn generation. So the genesis of the reform in the oil and gas industry that started around the year 2000, before it was passed into law in 2021, was actually to follow the best practices you know, globally. Um, we can say, break it down into the various objectives. Number one, you know, more revenue to the government. Number two, to make Nigeria a very competitive business environment, investment environment. Number three, we can say to attract investment into Nigeria because we've not amended our law from 2000, you know, to 2021. We've not amended our law. So it makes the investor to be doubting what are we really up to, you know? So these are the key objectives of the government. Then number four, you can look at it that, oh, when the oil price goes up, there must be more revenue to the government. So how come revenue, you know, is going uh, up for uh, the, the uh, practitioners? I mean, those who are in the industry and yet the, uh, government revenue remains static at certain sure. percentage. Sure. So, I mean, finally, again, government is looking at it that we've been rewarding, you know, efforts. It's now time we move away from rewarding efforts and reward uh, um, results, you know, by investment allowance. You grant investment allowance, you are just rewarding efforts. But if you now grant petroleum, I mean, this uh, production allowance, then it means it's on production. Okay. So it means you are not going to be rewarded for mere investment, although it's debatable because some people might say, you know, some people invested and they are not getting the level of returns. So these are the key, you know, objectives. 
that the government is looking at. Wow, wow. Yeah. thank you for that historical uh, background. Uh, but it's just to note, since 2000, they have been on it. So, it meaning mm -hmm. like 21 years after. Correct. Before we're able to get to that point. Correct. You know, the bill has been dragging and all of that. Correct. Uh, but thank you for that background. So, right. let's move forward now. Yep. What when it comes to transition for oil and gas industry? That's right. Um, what is the position, or what has been the position under the Petroleum Profits Act, mm -hmm. and then how is it different from the provisions under the Petroleum yeah. Industry Act? Okay. Yes. Thanks very much. Uh, now you know the um, we have the Petroleum Profits Tax Act, which is a single act, okay. and that act is complying with the rule of one tax one law ppta complies with that okay. incidentally pia does not you know comply with that okay if you pick companies income tax now you know income tax is only one law which is okay. that yes if yeah. you pick personal income tax is only one if you pick cgt is only one law if you pick PAYE, you see if you pick vat is only it's one tax one law that's the principle of okay. ppta okay. now but pia now is um, a consolidated law for that industry of which FISCA is only one, you know, uh, 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 chapter of those five chapters in the PIA. So we have the governance and the institutional framework. We have the administration. We have the host community. Then we have the fiscal framework. So when we talk about taxation, we will be focusing on the fiscal framework, which is chapter four. And then chapter five deal with uh, miscellaneous, you know, uh, provision of the act. So now focusing on the fiscal there, then, you know, from uh, beginning of that fiscal to the end deals with, you know, tax issue of uh, taxation, you know, as uh, as we have it. Okay. And so that's where we're having the differences between the uh, PPTA that okay. we used to have and then the uh pia now okay. and there are major you know changes between the ppta and the pia in terms of provisions okay oh yeah. great so this is my elaborate you know yep. the mm. fiscal framework the mm -hmm. governance and um, the host community issue correct it's a little society i mean it's kind correct. of um, like the supermarket correct every single thing exactly about the oil so, and gas industry. exactly okay on like exactly. the ppta that is a no, one it's just one only one we have the petroleum act that deals with the administration but I mean, deal with the administration. You have the Petroleum Drilling Act that deals with issues of royalty. So you have about nine different acts, which okay. were you know consolidated okay. into uh, the uh, PIA. Okay, so, even our audience, sorry, the lay people, that apart from the PPTA before now, there used to be other oh, laws. There are other laws. Other provisions oh, about taxes. De definitely, service. there are there are many other laws. At least about nine of them. They were listed even in the PIA. Okay. You know, if you if you look at the laws that were amended and all those laws were repealed, you know, like even PPTA has been technically repealed. We will not say has been totally repealed okay. because a PPTA, Petroleum Profit Tax Act, is still operational for those that is still having the OML license that has not been converted. So we will still be using it until their OML will expire. So technically, the PPTA has been repealed, but it's still operational. And that is why we keep on using the word technically. It has been repealed in law, but there is a saving provision that as at the time these people, you know, got this OML, this was the law that was, uh, you know, existing. So let's allow them to use that law, even though it's no longer the law we are using now. So we have uh, the two of them, but there are many other laws. You know, as I said, about nine of them were listed in the... Uh, the act there that were all collapsed into into the PIA. Okay, like yeah. I said, very well. We've got to get you some really. If you're trying to apply for an oil mining um, license yes. as a fresh investor, so to yeah. say, mm. uh, you come under the purview of the PIA. No, no, before it's, it's, it used to be OML before. Okay, OML. You know, so it's now PML now. Okay, now okay, PML. Uh, okay, so okay. it has already it has changed now. So okay. everybody that will apply now will apply for a new license the old one doesn't exist any longer okay it's okay. just there for those who are having those licenses to be able to uh go with the terms of coming on board so that it will not be as if government is changing the rule you know at the middle of, of the, the game, game. <laughs> okay. and that is one of the i would say excellent thing about the pia 
we have very good things about PIA. We have some challenges, you know, with provisions, you know, of the PIA. But this, I think, is one of the good uh, provisions there. I mean, all the issues there are controversial. Some people will say, no, PIA should be the law of the land. You should force everybody to convert. Okay. But I don't think that would be a right approach. Okay. The right okay. approach will be a gentleman approach. You know, as at the time you are on uh, OML, you gave them that license. There were terms and conditions that were. So let's allow them to run that and that ends. So the year that ends, then everybody will go on to PML, which is okay. a petroleum mining list now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, so those who have existing OML, right, under the you know um, petrol product tax act, they will keep following the framework of that PPTA. Correct. Until the tenor. Correct. Of that license, um, you know, runs out. Correct. Where does it convert? Okay. Correct. Okay. But there are some that are mandatorily they have to convert. Yeah, like, 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 the tenor of their... uh, like, like the marginal fields. You okay. know, those are smaller, you know, players. All those ones have to convert. You know. Automatically by the law. Yeah. Allow yeah, others want to know what is marginal field. What does it mean? Because we keep very okay. marginal field, okay. marginal yeah. field, and all of that. You and not being one single, um, you know, soup too. Marginal field there. This issue of an upstream, downstream, stream so and downstream. Is... Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You see, uh, marginal field. If you look at the um, 2005, you know, guideline during Obasanjo regime, um, the definition is, you know somewhat like a vague, like it's what the government declares a marginal field. But I can explain in the very, you know, a layman uh, language that, look, there are smaller fields, you know, attached to main field. If you look okay. at the, you know, oil in there, um, maybe the IOCs are not looking at it as a commercial quantity. Okay. You know, but notwithstanding, for those small players or smaller players, it's good for them. You know, they can drill and then they win oil from there. So simply it's like those smaller fields, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, people can work on you know, as against the bigger field. So that's on one side. Now, the second aspect is uh, the issue of uh, the uh, upstream, the midstream, and the uh, downstream. Now, the upstream is actually, and the upstream you can look at it from two perspectives. Okay. Uh, the upstream oil and then the upstream uh, gas. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now this upstream is actually winning. It, it starts from the exploration, you know, of uh, uh, prospecting for oil exploration development until winning of this, uh, you know, crude oil. You know, until the oil comes up from the ground. All the activities you are carrying up from the ground until it comes up through the well air and you know it flows to the flow station there. So you still call all those things upstream, you know, activities. Okay. So those are the upstream activities. Now the midstream activities are the pipeline, you know, uh, activities. You have all of them, you know, in the PID now, okay. which, which are clearly uh, defined, okay. you know, and the refinery, you know, and so on and so forth. You have them there. And then you have the uh, uh, dance stream, which is the marketing, for example, distribution and marketing. Like all these are petrol uh, stations we are having around here, okay. they are all dance stream. Okay. We also have service companies that provide services to the upstream, midstream, and downstream. So they are uh, also dance stream. Now, petroleum industry has divided these activities into two: the upstream, which is under the um, LUPRC, okay. uh, Nigerian Upstream okay. Petroleum Regulatory okay. Commission. Okay. So they are commissioned. So they look into only the upstream. Now the uh, mainstream, the mainstream and downstream is under the Nigerian Mainstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. So the word you can easily use to distinguish between the administration is commission for the upstream authority for the downstream, for the midstream and downstream. So again, if you go into the details, the upstream, a larger part of the activity, especially the crude oil, yeah. you know, uh, which is not offshore, is under, you know, uh, the Nigerian hydrocarbon tax, is subjected to uh, hydrocarbon tax. Okay. It's subjected to hydrocarbon tax. Okay. But the whole of the midstream 
and downstream are subjected to only companies income tax act. Uh, okay, okay, yes. okay. So everything about the upstream is yes. subjected to, to you know, carbon tax, tax and also and also carbon tax and also the company's income tax. They are subjected to two taxes. Two taxes. Yes. But for the midstream and downstream, they are only subjected to the company's income tax. Okay, wow, 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 so wow, 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 wow. They are this class is interesting uh, because um, by getting to um, hear a whole lot of um, um, differentiation. Uh, because for some, for most of our audience, uh, members of our audience out there, they may seem not to get, you know, when you are calling this thing and mentioning the differences, it will not, not be too clear, you know, for the way you've broken them down right here. Thank you so much. Sir. So now, sir, let's go, let's look at the taxes for the upstream now. Um, what are the rates? I can find another PIA. Um, well, you know, is it, um, you know, has it been sold under the DPTA? Is it different? What are the weights that apply for that upstream um, sector? Now, from the one that applies for the midstream and downstream, with the other center, is there any special rates or something differentiating the common 30% and all of that that on that center? So, I'd like to take us through all of this. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks. As for the, um, for the upstream, um, I will say that you have uh, about three categories. Okay. Now, for the upstream, which is onshore, you have the tax rate being uh, thirty percent for the hydrocarbon tax, and also thirty percent for the company's income tax. Now, when you add these two together, when you hear they said, "Oh, the tax rate was reduced from eighty-five to." 60 percent that's where they got the 60 percent from okay you know because okay. the tax rate for this uh, onshore you know before was 85 percent you know okay. of the charitable profit yes. so but now it's 30 percent on the hydrocarbon tax charitable profit and also that same set of income and cost is still going to be subjected to the company's income tax and at the same rate of 30 percent now the question is let's take that before we go to some other rates what is the difference okay. now the difference is that um, if you look at the upstream uh, uh, tax competition is an economic rent competition so it's only those costs that are the one like we call a gross profit in those days you know where you have direct costs yes, yes. so it's only like the direct costs that are going to be allowed okay. you know but when that is for that template and you subject it to 30 percent so you compute that stat and that will be payable to the government of course as hydrocarbon, uh, as hydrocarbon tax you know on a monthly basis because you have to file estimated tax and then be paid it on a monthly basis now on the other hand you also have to compute the company's income tax in which you have the same set of revenue and cost but in addition you add the administrative costs to it you know, and a lot of other operating costs you, know, you added to the uh, charges. So you arrive at another profit. Okay. So that profit you subject it to company's income tax rate of the same 30%. Okay. There is no difference in the rate as of now, okay. as far as company's income tax is concerned. Okay. So that is the first uh, category of those who are subjected to uh, both the, uh, the hydrocarbon tax as well as the uh, income tax. Now you have some that are subjected to uh, hydrocarbon tax, you know, uh, uh, fifteen percent. You know, those uh, that are just uh, coming this prospecting uh, license. So fifteen percent plus CIT of thirty percent. Everybody in the industry now must file the CIT returns, companies income tax returns. Okay. and be subjected to 30%. So, but for the middle one that has 15% for the um, hydrocarbon tax, yes. the rate when you look at those costs, what you apply is 15% for the hydrocarbon tax. Yeah. But when you come to the income tax, you are going to apply 30%. So, when you also have 45% tax rate, you won't see 45 in the act. But what you see is 15 here, then 30 at the other side. So pull together, 
that gives you, you know, 45%. And the last category are the offshore, you know, one, and then the gas, okay. uh, as well as uh, the midstream, all the pipelines and all the rest. All of them put together, they're 30%. Even when you win crude oil, you know, uh, offshore, okay. your rate of tax after taking those costs that are allowable, okay. you know, uh, subject to the cost price ratio okay. that is capping your cost to 65%, you know, of your revenue. You, that's, you, you can't claim, uh, you know, more than that. So the rate of tax for uh, the offshore, even mm -hmm. upstream, is 30%. It's not more than that. Okay. Uh, because okay. they are not subject to hydrocarbon tax. Okay. They are now subject to only company's income, income tax. tax. You know, so there are a whole lot of argument. I'm only explaining <laughs> the simple aspect of it because okay. when we get to argument, uh, you know, some of us will argue very seriously. If you have only one rate for one upstream somewhere there, uh, offshore. So why don't you have one rate also for the one, you know, uh, uh, onshore? Okay. So these are questions that, okay. uh, you know, okay. I mean, they are in the same upstream. Yeah, okay. I say it's the same I country. Think. So uh, exactly. So these are debatable. And not necessarily my personal position, but I'm trying to explain, you know, the position of the law. That is the law. Because if you ask me ordinarily, I will say, so why don't we have one rate? But I know uh, doctors uh, like yourself, professors, and uh, they want uh, you know economic rent. This is where we got. Now you got that onshore. So why are you not getting it offshore? Sure. And the model is different. You know, so these are all debatable. Uh, without faulting what is in there is to discuss now to improve okay. on what we have, you know, on ground. But in, in details, that's how that works. So all the downstream activities. Okay. Uh, the midstream activities and the downstream activities, all of them 100%, they are 30%. Okay. So it's there CETA is no, yes, it's CETA rates and they are, they are subjected to CETA rules, okay. you know, in filing, you know, their returns, you okay. know, so they are not under hydrocarbon tax at all, you know, including those who are operating offshore. Okay. Their rate, the rate of offshore before used to be 50%. Under the deep offshore inland basin production sharing contracts, okay. there are some are still under that act. Okay. You know, by the way of saving provision, okay. you know, okay. because of the contract, the license they were holding. So until that expires, you know. Okay. Uh, but I believe uh, almost everybody will convert to thirty percent. Okay. You know, I mean, subject to looking at some other matrices there, because that's a good one. You okay. know, to encourage investors in that sector. You know, if not for other challenges we are having in Nigeria, you know, like security and all the rest, yeah. uh, dropping the rate from fifty percent to, you know, thirty percent, I think is a very good one. Ordinarily, all other things being equal, equal. We, we should have uh, quite a lot of investment in the offshore, uh, um, offshore segment of the industry. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, like you trust it, I get um, um, um colleagues and um, um viewers. I hope you are following the um, technicality, uh, even though I like you trying to simplify them for us to understand because a whole lot more are there in so, that um, in that act. Still with me in the studio is um, no one other than Alaji. <laughs> um, yes, Alaji. Um, as he's here, and he has been sharing technicalities. Alaji Alacho has been simplifying the technicalities involved in the PIA so far. Um, Alaji, I want us to now go a notch further. Before I begin to take um, comments or questions from you, just the first one. Mm -hmm. Do you think certain members, do you think we've been well positioned to offer so far, you know, operational in the field? Yeah. Do you think um, we are there where we're able to actually provide appropriate tax advisory to all of these IOCs 
a lot of these players in the oil and gas sector, and even government, the federal ministry, you know, the ministry, mm -hmm. right? Petroleum resources, all of the NUPR, um, you know, the commission that you mentioned. That's right. Do you think we are probably positioned to, you know, offer top-notch advice for you? We, without uh, exaggerating and uh, with utmost respect, it is our members that are providing those advice currently. Wow, wow. And wow, that is wow. the reason why I said, for example, in the extractive industry, extractive industry taxation of the institute, okay. have you know uh, proposed that look, we must have our members that are working with the IOCs number one, okay. those working with NNPC number two, you know even though NNPC is now a limited but hundred percent owned by the government, okay. so let's see their thinking. Of course, we need to have people significantly from the FIRS. Okay. So let's hear what we are talking about. Let's have people from the solid minerals because we talk about extractive industry. Industries, okay. Have okay. to deal with the issue of communities. So if you go to the IOCs, um, the people that are the tax, you know, uh, managers and directors are there. They are our members. So it's just for us to come together, sit down as an institute, and advise the government on the right direction to go, starting with the government, and also for our members to be able to know the direction of the institute in being able to explain to their employers using our standards, for example, okay. and then using our PROGP, professional rules and practice guideline. Okay. You know, so we are, to me, for, I mean, with utmost respect, um, we are ahead in terms of advising, you know, our various uh, clients. We are also advising, quite a number of our members are advising the IPPG, Independent uh, Petroleum uh, Producing Group, you know, in Nigeria, uh, the MFOG, the Marginal Field, uh, you know, group, and the dance. Our, our people are there. So it's just for us to come together as an institute and then be able to project all these things in the various sectors of the Nigerian economy. So we are well positioned, in my honest view. It's just for us to bring our resources together and be able to sharp a very clear direction, you know, for the government for the IOCs, for the uh, national, you know, uh, uh, operators and practitioners and in other sectors of uh, of the industry as well. Wow, Allah, thank you so much. That was good yeah. to know. So kudos to CITN. So we are in charge, mm -hmm. right? We are in charge in summary. So we're going to open up um, um, our, our, our phone lines, <laughs> you know, our Zoom line and all of that, as we want to call it. Please, for so our members who are there and for um, viewers, if you have any questions or function, you use the palm icon. You use the palm icon so that when you see the palm icon on your screen, we can call on you. Um, please, you just go straight to the point um, because of time. Um, you know, go to the point, ask a question, and uh, make a contribution, and the rest of them. So please use the palm icon so that I can come to you. Meanwhile, team, can we open up the chat? Um, chats, are, are there questions? Okay, no question from the chat. So, members, so if you have a um, question, you use the palm icon. Feel free to ask questions in this, please. Don't take us outside of what we are discussing, right? Let's stay within the confine of the right. topic of this fourteenth episode, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and also remember, this is not a source of advisory. So if you need advisory, you know Alaji, Alatoye, right? So he's the director general of, um, you know, Ascension Academy Limited. So you can meet him and he gives you something very much more comprehensive. So let's start with uh, Mr. Is that Bami Dele? Or Reolua, am I correct? Mr. Reolua, um, you may unmute and speak. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. All right. And thank you very much, Alaji, for your very explicit uh, um, explanation so far. Sir, when you are trying to, uh, the moderator asks you to uh, expand on the uh, marginal fields, the other time we lost the audio. So I will appreciate if you can. Give us that clarification again. The difference between the uh, marginal field, the frontier basins, onshore and offshore, and their respective uh, fiscal responsibilities. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, let me start with the um, the marginal field. You know, the marginal field was actually a creation of the law. You know, as I mentioned during the. Um, Obasan your regime, you know, that was when the marginal field was created. And it was because, you know, the IOCs 
focused on the uh, bigger, you know, reserves. And those smaller reserves, they are not winning them. And these reserves also belong to the country. Yeah. But you have some people with very, I mean, with limited resources who can win those ones and also contribute to uh, the daily production of Nigeria. Okay. So I think that is the genesis of, uh, you know, cutting off those okay. uh, marginal fields. And they are called marginal fields because they are not a full, you know, field. So you can you can see the difference between the main field with the uh, the one with bigger reserve and then the marginal field, which the president declares as the marginal okay. field. That's the definition in quotes. Okay. It's whatever the president declares. declares. And that one is under the DPR. You okay. know, the DPR is the one that is in charge of all those things. And so they will tell you this is the area of that uh, marginal field. Now, in terms of a uh, frontier, you know, basin, this is a... Uh, an area which I mean the country is trying to you know explore into. Yeah. Um, you have uh, you know um, the other areas like uh, Anambra, they are like uh, the north where yes, you have yes. the frontier you know uh, exploration. Yes, yes. You yes, know yes. if you look at it, it's also in this uh, PIA. PIA. It's more pronounced you know in the PIA mm -hmm. rather than the earlier you know law, and there are no so much investment in that you know sector. And now there are a number of incentives, you know, to okay. to see how uh, Nigeria also able to win oil from those uh, other sector. Now the other one is the uh, the shallow waters. You have the shallow waters uh, uh, location as well, and then you have the offshore. The offshore one are those that are you know uh, far into the sea. Let me use that, okay. and then they have uh, you know equipment that is going to. You know, be hanging on the sea while they are drilling like that. that on the, the, so the exactly the float, the floating platforms. Okay. You know, so uh, um, it, it's quite expensive to go into the offshore, really, okay. and drill in there. But it's safer, you know, to be there because people cannot just walk and then come to you for, you know, for anything. Okay. So those are the different. Okay. you know um units of the uh the sector that we have there i don't know whether i cover that uh with uh, mr uh, yeah i don't know i think yeah, I think, yeah, I, think yeah, I think yeah i think you did yeah so but just to clarify from Mr. Oluwa, now for all of these you mentioned it is still those rates under the pia that apply yes uh, you know accordingly yeah. depending on your location yes um, onshore offshore uh, exactly okay. those those three categories of rates i explained those are the ones that uh, oh great that Mr. Rilo, we hope that um, allergies and inflation and sounds i'm going to come to our chat let's get let's say mr is that to look at the so you may unmute and speak we are here okay thank you sir thank you very much good morning sir presenter uh, good morning allergy good morning how are you today, Thank sir? you very much, sir. I'm, we are doing well. Well done, sir. Um, my you. question, sir, is to our moderator. Basically, um, you see, this this topic is um is honestly is very hot. Uh, we look at Nigeria now, and we look at the drive of the president and everything, you know. So I I want to just um say, sir, that can, a topic like this, this particular one on um you know finance that is really on petroleum industry act. Can we do this maybe like two or three consecutive weeks instead of just a 30 minutes dash that we are doing now? Because this one is like we are just rubbing the thing on the, on the surface. You know, we are not dealing so much into it. So if we can do it like two, three consecutive weeks, honestly, you will do us, the practitioners, a whole lot of good. We will get, we'll get you know, the nitty gritty of this rather than this, um, this short one. We appreciate this, but... Please, sir, help us look into it. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, we are going to look right. at it. You know, the Institute of Wisdom has an um, MPTPs. That's right. Mandatory professional, you know, you know, training. That's that, right. that, uh, so, you know, training, this program is not intended to be, is mm -hmm. not intended to be another MPTP, so to That's say. That's right. So, try to give an overview. Mm -hmm. I'll speak on broad aspect of issues. That's so, right. um, my brother, um, you need to, so we are going to pass a request to the education committee okay. that enjoy come up with topics and running these MPTPs. That's right. So that you can attend one of these MPTPs according to the schedule mm. to get a detailed um, treatment yeah. of all of these. Mm. Right. So MPTP will do justice mm. to, to all that more. So I'd like to right. say something that regard. Yeah, if, if I may just even add to that, uh, quite a number of MPTPs. 
um, some of us who are in oil and gas, you know, have been invited to present, you know, on PIA. If, and uh, as he had rightly observed, it, it's quite broad as we are discussing it. Like we will focus on fiscal, for example. So, and the introductory part is just going to be an overview of those five chapters, maybe only one slide. And we take the fiscal and then we take it, you know, as a chapter, then we start taking each part and sections and discussing it at MPTP because there we have about three hours. Exactly. Uh, so we have a whole lot of time and we also have a material, you know, that one can, you know, read and look at. And people who are invited from various, somebody will be the chairman of it, it will be an oil and gas person. Uh, some of us also will talk sometimes, you know, we alternate all those uh, things. I think if we can look for that MPTP and log on to it, exactly. I think it will be very helpful. Wow, just to wow, add to that. Wow. Thank yeah. you, Elijah. Thank you. So let's go to Mr. Is that Mwago? Mwago Ihe Gazier Chris. Are you there? Mr. Mwago Ihe Gazier Chris. You may unmute to speak to us. Thank you. Unmute. Mr. Mwago Ihe Gazier, can you hear us? Um, Tim, he's not muted. Is it from him? And he's speaking. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Mwago, you can hear us. Can you unmute? Your mute button is on. Can you unmute, Mr. Mwago? Okay, maybe we'll come back to him when he unmutes. Um, because we're speaking, but you know, we can't hear him. We're not hearing him. So let's take the opportunity to take um, written questions. There are quite some of them. I'm going to start with, uh, please, when we log on, may we please log on with our name so that I won't be calling them of devices. Even if you're not a member, let's just have your name for the records and recording. Right, so someone is asking, what is the practical difference between oil mining license and petroleum mining lease? What is the practical difference between oil mining license and petroleum mining lease? Mining lease. Uh, while I like your response to you, you are going to pay. Maybe that's why I didn't write your name. Because these are stunt on MPTP program. I'm going to pay for this. We can't see the name. So, Alaji, um, do you want to say something? Oh, about that? Okay, yes. Uh, let me just say, oh, no, also on the general uh, basis, okay. the oil mining, you know, uh, license, OML, OML, it's called OML, is the old one. Okay, under the that, PPT. Under the PPT, PPT, under the Petroleum Act. Okay, Petroleum Act itself. Then, then Petroleum Profit Tax Act. Okay. So, all those goes together. They okay. were the old you know, uh, order. Uh, order. <laughs> now the new order is the petroleum mining lease, you okay. know, uh, and, okay. and then the areas are different, you know, in terms of the size of the area. That's where the consulting you mentioned, uh, you know, come up. So, but it's in the law, you okay. know, and one can see it. So the petroleum mining lease is the new order. Okay. And that simplifies it for all our okay. viewers. viewers. Yes. Oh, thank you, Elijah. I think someone is there. Yes. Mr. Mwago, Ian Gazi, Chris, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, please. Yeah, can okay. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We are, we are all here. Go ahead, sir. Uh, well, I'm just trying to confirm what my you know, if uh, this cost will come in onto the MPTF, the more than what my colleague said, just 30 minutes of uh, the whole thing. I think we have to uh, incorporate it into and <laughs> understand it the more. Okay. Because I, I, okay. I concord what you uh, said. Uh, uh. Okay, Mr. Chris, you guys, yeah. Wow, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think uh, your concern has been raised by the Mr. Bay, you know, the other person that spoke the other yeah. time mm -hmm. as to whether the time for this topic. I will exactly. try to differentiate exactly. because the you don't have different programs for different purposes. Correct. This is a general sensitization mm -hmm. for as the name says CITN and you, taxpayer, the institute, administrators, yeah. and everyone. So the general overview program. So Correct. not we do not intend to begin to um in quotes teach for a CIT exam mm. <laughs> or today consulting on air, so to speak. So I like you also, you know, alluded to that. So please, um, Mr. Mwago, um, visit our website, check our MPTPs. Mm. The one concerning the area of oil and gas, PIA, yeah. all of those stuff, mm -hmm. they are there. We have an annual training and manual. Yeah. So look at them. You may want to leverage on that advantage. 
I attend one, as Elijah said, you have um, industrial experts mm -hmm. who drill down to further specifics mm -hmm. on things like this. And also, go to the CITNM website, you're going to see our e-learning platform, where there are bouquet of um, training, you can pay, log on, uh, it's a self-training um, yeah. um, platform. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm privileged to be in the committee. I worked on that. You know, you can go download the training and read really and study. So we have all of you. You can do more detail. Because one hour, I look at our time is almost uh, getting close. It's not enough. Mm. Um, and all of that. So Mr. Wango, nonetheless, the points are well noted, sir. Mm. Um, we go back to the text question. And this is from Mr. Mubarak Idris. Mubarak Idris says that while Elijah was discussing, he talked about challenges on some provisions in the PIA. What could those provisions be? And what are your candid opinion on how to manage those provisions in practice? <laughs> Why don't you talk about the gray areas? Which yes, the, gray, the, gray, the gray areas. I don't want to go <laughs> into so much uh, those uh, controversial uh, areas. Uh, okay. For instance, um, the issue of dual tax, let's speak it. Dual tax. Dual tax, for okay. example. Okay. We are talking about multiplicity of taxes in Nigeria. And, you know, if we keep on debating whether there should be hydrocarbon tax and company's income tax, it can take us almost a day and then we will not agree almost anything because those of us who believe, you no, know, what we should focus on is government take. Okay. Okay. Whatever rate you will fix, whether 60 or 50 or, you know, 63 or 65, just take one. And let me file only one tax return and I move okay, on. Okay, okay. Now I have okay. to file this return. I have to file that returns. This is just for academic people. That's why I said okay. it for doctors are prop <laughs> to be analyzing what we have from the economic <laughs> rents. And, uh, you know, these are academics. I'm talking about revenue to the government. The government. And you know, administrative ease. Yeah, for administrative ease. Oh, and then fair. the cost of collection. Oh, yeah, okay. So filing two returns, uh, answering two queries in respect of the same cost, the same revenue. Is this what we are still looking at? Okay. You know, this is one of the areas of challenge. But uh, as I said, that's my own uh, view. Some have a different view. Let's look at the cost price ratio, for example. Okay. The cost price ratio that cap the cost that you can claim to 65% of your revenue, excluding certain costs. Now, if you cap it and you say, I carry for the 35% of my cost. Now, these costs, they are in most cases uncontrollable costs. For I just came from uh, Uyo, you know, day before yesterday. Right from the airport, you have Mopul that is going to follow you down to wherever you are going. You can't go alone. Okay. All the costs are huge. You charge it, you know, to your account. And then somebody says, I'm going to allow only 65% of that. Who is supposed to provide security in the first instance? <laughs> so these are the arguments for some of us that, look, we are just going to be here. The oil will be there. The investors will not come. Now, again, you also introduced... There are some other sections like reasonability test. Okay. You know, under CETA is rain. rain that rain. one is okay. Reasonability is there. Under PPT, uh, reasonability is not there. Okay. It's not there because okay. there are a lot of things you cannot, that will never pass the test of reasonability. If you introduce it under PPT, you only send the investor, for instance, the security example that I just mentioned now. Who is supposed to provide the uh, security? security? We will be making life difficult even for the FRS guys if they don't disallow costs like that. This, is it your duty? The security beyond your door is not, you know, like even gate man, not security, because they don't carry guns. Exactly. Now, all these ones that are carrying guns and you are paying millions, you know, to secure your facilities and here and there. You know, it's the duty of the government. I'm disallowing them. So that's reasonability test. But if you put wholly, okay. necessarily, and exclusively, exclusively for the business, okay. you can see it is for it. Then we can move on. But if you say I should use my judgment to say whether it's reasonable or not, if I am an FRS officer, I will say sorry, it's not reasonable. <laughs> and that how, how is it reasonable? <laughs> let us let us uh, you know put a reasonability test okay. to a layman okay. that look who is supposed to provide security in this country. I ask that question who. Is it uh, companies or is it government? If we set it in CITN objective, who is supposed to provide security in Nigeria? Who will you take? 
Is it company or government? Now you think government. And so, so why are you paying? You will not be able to answer it. Is it reasonable for you to be paying for what government is supposed to do? Then you run into trouble. Then uh, the companies will be arguing, no, 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 Mr. Mr. FRS, man, please, no, be very kind to look. He said, no, no, sorry, I'm going to disallow this uh, cost. As far as he's concerned, it's not as he said. Don't forget that there was a decided case where Shell was charging scholarship to its account in 1973. That case went to court. It took 20 years down to Supreme Court in 1993 before judgment was given to say scholarship expenses is allowable. Wow. <laughs> now, is, is scholarship, you know, related to oil operations with utmost respect? You know, so anyone, you know, among us will do what the FRS probably want to okay. do. That Look, uh, yeah, you are providing scholarship to, you know, people of the area. You know, so that you can be friendly, this under corporate social community responsibility, relationship. community relationship. And that's another example you are mentioning because that's another cost entirely okay. where you have to enter into an agreement with the chiefs. Yeah. You buy them cows. You you know have to take care <laughs> of them. Yeah, yeah. There, there there is this global MOU. You know, with each communities, and you are charging these into their accounts. It, none of them is reasonable with utmost respect. If so you subject it to, you, to the you, you, you have to, it is wholly necessary. That's why we are saying is wholly necessary. It is wholly, it is necessary, and it is exclusively for the purpose of you operating in that, in that, uh, in that, yeah. in that location. You can't operate there if you don't incur these expenses. So we are saying, yes, we understand, you know, the argument of some people, no, that it has to be reasonable, you know, it has to be reasonable well. I know it's going to be very, very difficult. <laughs> very difficult. Reasonability can work in other environments, not in our environment where the security challenges is there, where the communities are not too pleased, you know, with um, with something. The they're, 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 they're exactly. They are not really pleased with the government, but it's a transfer aggression to the companies. True. So we cannot catch the government in Abuja. Of course, so you can't get that. So we hold you responsible. Because having paid tax to the government, you do not ordinarily you don't have any responsibility. And that is the that is the argument about reasonability. If you have paid in under PPT, you paid 85%. Should we be talk, even talking about another 2% here, another this one here, or any community? They are supposed to have light. They are supposed to have power. They are supposed to have very good road. Hospitals. Now, now, hospitals, everything. Yeah. All these things you are doing under the CSR. How reasonable is it to your operation? How related are they? They will say, oh, maybe you have your cousin there, you are in this company, and then you go and start okay. tiring the road of your village. It's not allowable because it's not reasonable. It's not, it has not in, no connection with your business. So this is the reason why we are saying, look, as Nigeria, we, we, our situation is peculiar. I understand the argument of the other party that, no, let's put reasonability there and then we can disallow as much as possible. Okay, disallow it. Then the investors will also withdraw. Because this is going to be very huge okay, when we uh, okay, so okay. so my brother there uh, I think I understand I I didn't want to go into those uh, details not to bias then, anybody's mind because this new government we will all be going into I mean this national tax reform yeah. I know our president will be going in to discuss a number of these things with the with the uh, uh, with the national tax uh, reform and so there are issues that you know everybody will need to contribute to. And from the extractive industry, for example, we are looking at all these issues, you know, to be able to propose some things to the council to encourage the government so that we can have both local investors and international investors. Because if the uh, the um, internal rate of returns doesn't make sense, okay, yeah, after you have disallowed quite a lot of things, they will not invest. If I if we ask ourselves now, I think about uh, two weeks ago. There was a program with some other um, uh, a set of people, and we are looking at the effect okay. of a PIA since two years ago. Okay. Has there been more investment in Nigeria? That is the question probably we want to ask ourselves. Exactly. These are the provisions there and there. Let me also give you one shocker there. It's a very, just only one word, like one word put in the act. And it's a clog that if I have, if you, you have money, I will ask anybody who has money and want to invest under such circumstance. 
If I want to file tax returns now, you have to file on equity basis, no longer on economic interest. You know what that means? License is always given to Nigerians. Nigerians will hold 60%, especially you know, where you farm in all these marginal fields and all the rest. Okay, license is given to me, I don't have a dime. Then I now invite you, please come and farm in. Then you bring 100 millions of US dollars. I'm just breaking it down so that you can understand what we have put in our law. Because these are things we debated. And I said, look, this will not help us, whether international or local. Now, if you bring in 100 million to say, now let us drill this marginal field, and the oil is coming up, I am having 60% because I'm a Nigerian. Okay. Then I farm in 40% to you. Yeah. But meanwhile, you put down 100 million to do the drilling. Now, when we want to file the tax returns, before I will file on 60%, you will file on 40% or pre-recovery period, okay. I can file even nail, you can file on 100% and then we are fine. But our law now is that I have to file because I'm the one that is holding the equity. Okay. And you will just be treated as a service provider okay. by providing the fund, like just a funding party. Okay. Because if the law requires that we should file on equity basis, then it means I'm the only one that will be filing NHT, okay. you know, and then you just be like a funding party. Yeah. And so all the capital allowances that is in my books will not be in your own book. Okay. Whereas okay. you are the one spending the money. Are we course. going to have an investor? Will you give me your money so that may I record it in my book? And I don't have the money. So I'll just treat it as loan. And you are in the industry as an operator. You have three things in there, the asset, the experience, and the fund. So this, these are the challenges that, uh, that are there, you know, with my brother. If we start picking each of those things, no, you know, the whole time we just go to uh, uh, like I can solve the passion in you because when you're mentioning you. from one to the two to the three to mm -hmm. the four, mm -hmm. and for you, it's um, our time is um, um is up. Yeah. Um, for other colleagues who ask some question, please tell me our time is up and um, we won't be able to go beyond this. Um, we need to sign out as soon as it is um, 12 on the dot. Yeah. Um, Elijah, I want to thank you so much. The fellowship is huge, people mm -hmm. ask some question, and that means um, there's need them, um, there's more yearning. Mm -hmm. for more clarification. No problem. So, Elijah, mm -hmm. we are going to look forward in the future no problem. to have you back on here no just to, you know, you know, elucidate further and um, deepen the perspective you've unearthed um, okay. this no morning. No problem. Um, um, thank you all for being there. Thank you for joining us. We thank um, the presidents of the Institute for being with us, for giving us the leeway to operate in this program. We thank the registrar and the top management team of CITN. Yep. We thank the operation team. You can't see them. They are there, you know, um, mm -hmm. being busy with different things. You can't see them. We thank them. And very much, my brother, we thank him, Dr. Alatoye, who uh, graciously mm -hmm. made it down here. And it has been a very interesting class. I've been taking notes. If the judge allowed you, thank you once again for coming. All right. Thank, thank you, very you much. so much. Thank you. So until we meet again for the 15th episode, we'll say bye for now. Bye-bye.